and welcome to Co-op Guild. This is Steve here with Kim. Hi everyone. We're here to do a preview play of Fire Siege, a Feralis story. So this will be a full playthrough with a teach. Just want to make a note that this game will be on GameFound, so if you're curious, you can take a look at it with the link in the description below. And we'll be playing on easy difficulty for this playthrough. Uh, this is a prototype, which you see before you, so all the uh, art and component quality, all that's subject to change. Uh, but this is a game where we'll be playing as centaurs trying to defend the citadel in the center of the map. So this is going to be having different lanes. You see there's a red lane, a yellow lane, and a green lane spiraling into the center. And along the path, we're going to have these uh, hunters and queens will be appearing as well as they march towards the middle. Now our job is to complete different missions before we lose the game. There's a lot of ways we lose the game. We lose the game if either one of us dies. Or any character dies, to put it that way. We lose the game if we need to add an enemy to the board and we have no more of that enemy left over. We lose if someone moves into the middle of the board as well. And we also lose up here in the corner, there's this track. If that track ever reaches the middle, we lose the game. So lots of different ways to lose, only one way to win. And yep. how's that? <laughs> the way to win is to complete different objectives, which will flip these banners. Once we have all six banners revealed around the board, we win the game. Okay, so let's talk about the win condition real quick. In this game, you have different objectives, one of which will be present in every game, the other two which will be random. For our game, we're playing with these three objectives. So let's start talking about the destroy the nest objective. That's the one that's going to be available in every game you play. So you see there, there's a number of banners down there. That's how many banners you will earn if you complete that one. Now this one's multi-part, meaning if you destroy the green nest, you get one banner. If you destroy the yellow nest, you get two, and the red nest, you get three. So what you see around the board are the different nests. There is a yellow, a red, and a green nest. And if you destroy those, you'll get the associated number of banners as well. So that is always a part of the game, but we have other things to do. So we also have inner powers. All heroes achieve their awakening status for one banner. And finally, fire with the war machine for three banners if you complete that one. So any combination of those will give us six banners, we win the game. So let's take a look at our characters real quick. So Kim is playing as Gesta the Archer. She has four health, two attack. It's on the right side of the board. And the bomb corner you see her awakening condition. So if she moves a marker up the power track above the highest milestone, so she flips to awaken status. Or if she spends five white energy, she also flips. What does that mean if she gets into awaken? She'll go into Super Saiyan mode, I'd like to call it. So awaken status. So she becomes the archer, which has uh, still four health, three attack now, and a special ability called Dart, which you can use that energy for, and a passive ability as well. So this turns on my range attack. That's what Dart really does. That's correct. Okay. Yep. But right now we start in our normal state now. So that's be one of our goals. If we can, everybody can flip, we'll get one banner for that one. And for my character, I'll be playing as Hurtling the High Prelate. So I have five health, one attack, and if I can deploy three or more of Velkin while I'm in the Citadel, I can then ascend. Or I can spend five white energy. Now when I transform, I get into Hurtling the High Prelate with a Halo ability. So this lets me heal all heroes in my the avenue where I'm located, so one of the lanes. I also have Resilient, which anytime I perform healing, I can instead perform a Velcon action. Um, I do get a little more health as well, but my attack still stays at one. The other thing we'll be doing in this game is potentially trying to manage the war machines. So bring at least two out of the three war machines to safety. So these are the war machine tokens. One's going to start here, one's here, and one here. And so the object is if there, if one of these lanes activate to move, if there's an enemy in that spot, it will move towards the, the nest. Um, if there's only heroes in there or, or friendly characters, it will move towards the Citadel. Our job is to try to get it to the Citadel. If we do that, we'll get a bonus. If the enemies manage to bring them out to the off, off the board, we'll get a negative effect. But our job is to try to get two of the three in the middle. All right, let's talk about a little bit about the rest of the board. So we have a morale track, which will be moved up and down. It's going to deal with this guy down here. Um, what you need to know is that the higher you get, the, the you'll get this effect multiple times. If you get towards the bottom, you get the negative effect a lot. Now, 
Don't worry about it right now. We'll get to that more later in the game. Up there in the corner, we have the, tr uh, the track we need to follow. So we'll be moving along the track here times it tells us to move. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And right next to it is the power up track. So this is something we can leverage to get stronger in the game. So this is the close up of what it looks like. In the far left, it has movement, the units we can spawn, then it has attack bonus, and then finally the white energy. So what we'll be doing in this game is we're going to be drawing tiles out of our bags. So here's an example of a tile. Here's one of the sides. So this, the white side is always good for the players. And then we'll resolve those icons. And then after doing that, we'll flip over to the bad side and then we'll resolve this as well. Now the kicker is when you're playing these tiles, you're going to draw them random, randomly out of your bag. You will only see one side. Everyone else at the table will see the other side. So we'll be working together, doing limited communication to try to convey, hey, this is a great tile to pick. I would avoid that one, for example. Can't say exactly what's on the other side, but you can talk generically about it. So that's the big co-op part of the game. And that's basically it. You will be drawing these tiles, resolving the sides, and then moving on to the next player. And so uh, we'll get through the symbols as we play the game. Okay, I think we're ready to start. So let's go ahead and draw our tiles. And we'll start the game, and we'll explain as we go. Okay. okay. Flip upside down. That's, I'll fix that. <laughs> All right. So I do my tiles, and Kim has her tiles. And Kim, would you like me to start? Sure. Okay. Well, what is your goal here? What do you want to go for? What I would like to do mm -hmm. is probably sprint as fast as I can to this nest, because I think I can take that out by myself. Okay. And then we can kind of shut that lane down okay. and focus elsewhere. Yeah, the other thing I'll mention, there are broken walls here that are currently there. We can actually repair or break more walls potentially. Um, mm -hmm. So that is also a shortcut as an option. Actually, if you want to go closer there, you could start in a different spot. If you started here, that's even closer. That's true. You want to start in yellow, yellow range? Instead? I do, yep. So to start, you can start at 90, two spaces away from, from the middle. Okay. So, all right, how about you start then? Oh, yeah, wait, no, that's right. I'm giving you clues. So I like... <laughs> I gotta do something. I gotta do something, I know. Um, this one's okay. That one's fine. That one's pretty good. That one's pretty good. This one's pretty good. Yeah. But you don't need it right now. None of those are like, oh my gosh, don't, don't draw that tile. I don't play that tile. I think... Can I do this one? Is that going to be a terrible yeah, start? Yeah, that one's fine. Okay, let's fine. start there. All right, so I can explain this one. So first thing we do is look at this side. This here is uh, going to increase the morale track. So that is going to be down here on the board. So because she has two of those symbols, we move this up twice. Um, we don't have to worry about it right now, but this will be moving up and down the track. And we want to keep it as high as possible because, like I said, um, at some point we'll get this bonus if it's in the positive range when it resolves. We'll get this negative effect if it's in the negative range when it resolves. Mm -hmm. That's all I have to worry about now. Now Kim has the Velcon action. So this is a very powerful action throughout the game. So the best way to describe this is by looking at our power up board. So let's take a quick look at that. So with the Velcon action, you can do, um, you can spin that to move. So the green track tells you how many spaces you can move characters. So that could be friendly Velcon, which are these yellow units on the board. So these here are friendly to us. These are basically armies that are supporting us or you can move yourself as well. And the number of char characters you move here is currently at three because that's where the marker is starts at. So for one action, you can move uh, characters up to three times. With, an, with one of those actions, you can also spawn. The number of units you spawn is equal to the blue track. In this case, we start at one, so we can only spawn one of those Vulcan armies. Uh, the other thing you can do with it is you can do an attack action. And we'll get to combat later. Okay. So those are the three things you do with that Vulcan action. So what do you want to do? I would like to go one, two, and three. Ooh, I smart. I like that. I, I smart. I like that. <laughs> yes, I, I like that. Sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes I am. <laughs> okay, now that you've done this side, you have to resolve the other side. So you're going to get two power up. Oh, which one do we want to do? So you can move any of those uh, tracks up twice. I kind of want to increase the attack okay because yeah if you can top on those tracks you will get your 
um, flip into your other mode. Yep. Okay. And now the bad part down here says we either move twice on the track right up here, or you take a wound. I can take a wound. Okay. That's all right. All right. So you have two wounds, only two health left. Yeah, because we start each with one wound. That's right. Okay. All right, that's it. And then I replenish my board. That's right. Okay, Cam. Let's see. What do I... I kind of like this one. Sure. <laughs> you seem to seem excited about that. I mean, it's it's a good side that I see. This is also very good, but I think, I think I'll save that for later. I mean, that one's... Nothing that I'm looking at is a bad choice. Okay. I will do this one to start. So, very similar to what you just had. So mm -hmm. let's move up that attack track twice. I'm gonna try to get you flipped over. Then here, I can either take a wound or move up twice on the track. I will take the wound. Okay, and flip over the white side. Ah, so this I can either heal or can gain one white energy. I can do that twice. And then I get a single Velcan action. So for me, I think I'll do, I think I'll fully heal. And my Falcon action is I will move. And what's your current speed? What, three? Three. Okay. I'm going to go one, two, three. I'm going to try to get up a train so we can get them down there. All right. That's it for me. Kim, you're up. Um, I prefer this one, of course. But your face tells me otherwise. <laughs> it's not... Great. I mean, it's not great, but you can pick it. Well, because I do have two wounds. Yes. So if the fact that you picked up that dice, maybe I don't want to do that. Um, <laughs> so, so a little, little, little much more information. That's okay. It's okay. Uh, this is really good for you right now. But okay. I don't know if I'm, I'm willing to do that. Um, this is also very tempting. I like those two. That one, that one's okay, but not now. My my advice. I can take this one. Okay. Let's do that. All right, so Kim has, oh, moving the morale track down. But it's only neutralized. Oh, it's neutralized, yep. Now flip it over. So you get to either heal twice or move up the white energy. I will heal. Yes, I was hoping you would. <laughs> Good choice. And you get a single Vulcan action. Um, so if I move here and I'm with mm -hmm. this enemy, yes. will I get attacked or? No. Okay. No. They don't want to attack you, only the queens attack you. One. Mm-hmm. And if I move him, they don't move the machine. That's right. Okay. The machine gonna... only moves when the lane activates. Okay, he's gonna stay put. We haven't seen that yet. So um I might act well, this guy's guarding this broken wall. He's also there to help move this down, but if you want if you're planning on attacking that, you might as well bring him with you. Oh, that's a fair point. He'll reach, because then this is two and three. Yeah, because otherwise you're gonna okay. take damage. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Cam. Um I don't like this one right now. Okay. These, this one doesn't seem necessary. I can I play this. Sure. I don't like it, but we well, still like it. <laughs> I think I need to. Yeah, it's it's a fine option. Okay. So on the back side, we're gonna lose our um, spawning rate. So now it's down to one, which is not great because I need to spawn lots of guys in the middle. So that's not helping me. We also draw one of these bad cards. So <laughs> why did you pick? <laughs> the other option the worst. <laughs> so here we go. So we're going to add a hunter in the yellow path at the spawn point right there. And then that this means that lane is going to activate. Okay. And they move. But we have no enemies there. So that is going to push this war machine down. Okay. And these two are going to move here. Do they move twice? They would move twice, um, but I can stop two hunters from the movement. Oh, okay. So how it works is... The Velcan soldiers can stop one hunter from moving. Uh, the our, their heroes can stop two from moving, or we can just stop a queen, a single queen from moving. Okay, so you're like a safety net. Yeah, safety net. Perfect. You shall not pass. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kendall. You're welcome. All right, so that was my bad side. Uh, flip over to the good side. Oh, we improve our morale twice. And I'm at full health, so let's get one white energy. All right, you're up, Kim. Gonna be tough. Okay. Lean this one. Great choice. Okay. I mean, it's a little risky. It is risky. Okay. <laughs> so you get one Belkin action. Yep. So I have to attack this guy before I attack this, correct? That's correct. All right. He's going down. Okay. So to do combat is 
you will be figuring out your power level. So Kim, your strength currently is at two. Yes. Two strength. Uh, the Velcan army will add one to that as well. So you have three strength. Mm -hmm. That hunter only has one health. So you're He's guaranteed dead. to take him out. Yep. But I have to roll this dice. I have to roll the dice. Now, what's going to happen is you're going to roll the dice first. Then after you roll the dice, we'll see what the possible results are. So you could potentially get additional attack. Two additional attack. You could get um, this here, which is backlash damage. What that means is after you destroy stuff, either you or a, a Velkin in your spot will need to take a damage. And so this says you get the damage before you destroy any bad guys. Okay. And then this here means you actually shield from that. You don't take any damage, which is awesome. And then the last horrible one is you spawn an enemy in that spot. <laughs> so really, really bad. So go ahead again, roll that dice and see what happens. Ooh, so double he's, hits. he's very dead. That is, you know what? Yeah. You know what? Shabam. I'm gonna give it to you. That's Shabam. a gas plan. That's, that's a gas plan. That's way over kill. Against this one. Yes. Yeah. Now I really hope they don't spawn in the green lane. So Kim, because you did rolled so well, you had five, you only used one of it. You actually have four left over. Looking at this, this is only three. Bam! I'm just doing all the work. So you totally destroy that nest. After, now you can only destroy the nest after there's nobody else in that space, which is true. I'm jumping ahead. I gave us our banner. You are super, <laughs> super attack. <laughs> super attack. So look, look at this. Destroy the nest. If you destroy the green nest, you get one banner. So that's why Kim flipped that one banner. So awesome. Five more. Five more to go. Exactly. <laughs> Five more to go. Okay. So that was your action, but we had four more things to do. So oh, yeah. you have to move down the track. I forgot twice. about that. Yep. Um, We get a card. Yep. And that's where we are. Yeah, we get a card. So let's see what the card says. It says spawn in red and activate features in that lane. So first, this is going to move. And then we're going to spawn a guy, a hunter. And they're going to activate. So this guy can stop one of them, but the other guy's going to move twice. So uh -oh. I was right. <laughs> Here they come. <laughs> okay. okay, so that was that. And then we flip this over to the good side. You get three power. Oh, I see why you told me to do that. Uh -huh. so, so this is exceeding the charts. Yep, so now you so. get to apply that power to a different track. I'm going to go one. Wait. You want spawning, right? Yes, or I can use white energy to do as well. I need five. Five white energy yeah. or regular spawns? Yeah. Because I'm, I'm tempted to do this one because I can shoot my range with the white energy. That's fine. I see what you're doing. Okay. Because you don't care about me. Two. I see. I see. That's <laughs> fine. How, many, how much? Three? Uh, Three. Wait, Um, was that already at the top? This was already at the top. So yeah, one to push it over would then boil over to a different lane. So yeah, so you can move three. So two. One pushed it over. What, you one in excess, push it to a different lane. So you're good. Oh, so all three were over. Sure. Yep, yep. I'm going to do this one. Perfect. <laughs> okay. And Kim, you are now in your new state, I am. the archer. So you have four health, uh, three attack now, and dart ability. So you can spend a one to three energy, choose an adjacent space containing one or more enemies, then deal one to three damages in that space. Yes. Now, that is not an action. That is just something you do. Which is great. Which is great. And Steady says what? During return, you may roll any die, or when you roll any die, you can re-roll a second time, ignoring the first results. That's amazing. Yes. That is amazing. I think I need to pull my weight. You know what? You have, <laughs> you have a situation to handle over there. Just go do it. I do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to sprint my way to this red lane. Oh, you know what? We can, after all that, we forgot to take the backlash damage. Oh, I do have to take damage. Yep, so either you take damage or the Velcan soldier takes damage. Mm. Athletic combat. I'll take it. I think I need the help. Okay. Okay. I am not too excited about what I see here. All right, so I have a question. Since this wall breach is here, mm -hmm. should this guy have gone this way? Or oh, keep going that good, way? That's a good question, because he started here, right? Yeah. Yeah, so anytime they will go through the breach, it moves them closer to the um, to the citadel. So uh, it is one, two, three, four, five, or one, two, three, four. It's about the same. But so yeah, he could have gone through here. We can do that. We'll say that. 
Because he's now physically closer as opposed to you. <laughs> he's like, I see an opening. Yeah, go through it. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. But since it's equal distance, it doesn't really matter? Doesn't really matter, no. I mean, it kind of matters strategically. It matters for us because he's not in that spot, so. Oh, so we're going to use that. No, nope, we'll leave it there because <laughs> we left him there earlier, so. <laughs> See Good question. Game. Good question. Now, it won't make it harder for us, so. Okay. All right. Great. Should have asked. I should. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm more okay with this one now. I don't like it, but okay. This is pretty powerful. I'm not sure if I want to play it now, though. Okay. Actually, that might be might be worth it. Um, this one is, I don't want to play. But okay. Unless it's really, really good on the other side. No. One of the other two is fine. These the... are about equal distance for you? The one on the right is way better. This one here? Yeah. Okay, we'll do this one. Here's the bad side. <laughs> I have to roll the die. So there's an <laughs> evil die, and we're looking for the top part. If it's, a, it's either a one or it's a zero, these don't have the ones on it. So one or a zero, and we lose that many guys. Now the other symbols are bad. So here we have to move down the morale track. Here we have to move on the uh, horde track up there. Um, and I think those are the only results. So. We'll see what happens. So let's roll the die. And... Come on, Steve. Oh, moved twice on the track, which I wanted to point. Oh, no. <laughs> so this is a card we haven't seen yet. One, yep. two. So now we get this new enemy entering the board, spawning. So let's see what we get. We get the lo lovely Yapook. <laughs> so... That's great. These big monsters that come after Big them. monsters, yeah. So he's going to have four health. Um, and he's going to be moving twice. He'll be spawning in the green lane. Oh, I'm so glad you're there. <laughs> so, we'll add him to the board. Okay, let's take a closer look at his card. They all do something different. So this one, if we defeat it, we'll get one uh, banner, which is great. Now, this special ability is, cannot be defeated if there are any other Skrill or enemies in his space. So okay. he has to be the last one defeated. Um, so Kim, hopefully you can do something about that. I can, I can take him out. <laughs> I just need some actions. All right, so he's on the board. Uh, okay, that was my bad side. Let's move to the good side. Whoa! I wasn't lying. That is really just pretty good. <laughs> three actions. Well, let's try to clean up this mess, I think. Yes, please. So, I have one attack. <laughs> so, but this gives me one. So, You've, yeah, there's two. You can uh, do. Let's roll the dice. See what we get. Come on, double hit. Yes. Didn't need the but the other one would be better. I'm blocking. That's okay. So they're dead. <laughs> Which is great, because uh, another thing that we didn't mention is there's every 300 in a space, they merge into a queen, which is really bad. Yeah, and that's the queen mm -hmm. right there, which... And she will do lovely. damage as she activates, too. Yeah. Now, I do have to take backlash damage. Um, I'm going to take it to myself this time. Mm -hmm. So that was my first Velcan action. I've got two more to do. Let's get out of this area. And let me try to see if I can't help... The other spots. So you're coming to the red area? After I destroy this guy, I will come towards red. But yeah, I think you have to head him off. You're you're right here. I think so too. So I'm gonna go one, two, and if I have one more movement. Yeah. Three. And my last action is I think I'll attack. Okay. All right. No backlash damage. Uh, ah, okay. That's okay. That's All right, okay. Still got him. Good job. Yep. I have to take back the sample. I'll take it to myself. Okay. All right. That's it for me. I'll draw a new tile. Felt pretty good about that one, though. Yeah, that was a pretty good turn. Um, I really want to do this one. Is that going to be bad? That's okay. This you is can, okay now? You can do that one. Yes. Okay. Oh, I see why you want to do that. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> Jim. All right. I'm attacking that guy first. Okay. I don't have to declare if I'm using extra damage here until after... I see the result, right? That's correct. So okay. what Kim's talking about is the purple track there. If you're doing combat, you see that it has a plus one or plus two or plus three. You can add that as a modifier after you roll for the attack. Mm -hmm. And so what Kim's asking is you can roll the dice and just decide what to use now. So right now it's at the top of it, which means we get plus three to our roll, but it's got three arrows. So we have to move that down three spaces if we use it. So but yes, you have that available to you. But your base attack is... Three. Yeah. And, and I you have, have a guy with you. You have four so, already. I mean, it, he's dead. Yeah. Ready? Okay. First attack. Action. Super dead. So you want to reroll that. Oh, he's going to give me backlash damage. Just one damage. Remember, you, she can do that because they're passive. 
Yeah, I mean, the worst that could happen is I spawn another enemy. That's the worst, yes. Everything else is about the same. Mm. Maybe I let the Valkyrie die. No, you, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, he's dead. Okay, you took him out, but who's taking that damage? Oh, and that also gives us another banner. All right, another banner. Oh, you got it? Yep. That's Very cool. Um, Do you want to take I'm it? Gonna, gonna... I'm going to have him die. Okay. Sorry, dude. Fine. And that was your... Oh, wait. Wait, no, because if I park him here... Yep. I will take it. Okay. Now the next... That was your first was of first three. One. So I get two more. Two more. I'm going to move. So this is going to be one. Yep. And I'm going to run real fast. Two, three. Okay. You have one more action. I'm going to... Freebie action. My dart. Oh. Smart. Ooh, okay. I'm just very intelligent. <laughs> All right, so spend... or you're, or just surprised. <laughs> no, I I did not see you shooting through the wall. So that's of course I'm going to shoot through the wall. Um, yeah, so spend one. Energy. Oh, let me pull up the screen so people can see what's going on. So you for dart, you spend one to three energy. This is not a Vulcan action. Yep, I'm so. just straight up, bam, one damage. Yep, one damage. Take him out. Boom. And you still have another Vulcan action to do. You can spawn guys. No, you I can don't. move. Yeah. Oh, you're right, because that was free. That was free. Um. Spawn guys, let's. <laughs> what do we have? Just one for spawn. Yes. Okay. He goes in the middle, right? He goes in the middle. I'm gonna need help blowing this up. You can run over there if you wanted. Well, I got plus three uh -huh. and another three. There's a chance you can do it on your own. <laughs> there is a chance. Do I try it? You want to try it? Come I kind of want to try it. You want to try yeah. it? But I'm halfway dead, so if a spawn comes here, uh, don't die. <laughs> I'm going to spawn a buddy. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. And that was your good side. Now for the bad side. Well, wait. I have a question. Yes. <laughs> Excuse me. If, for, in order for you to heal me remotely, first you have to flip your thing yes. over. Yes. Um, but I have to be in the same color lane as you. Yes. But I have to flip anyway. I'm not even close to flipping. Oh, you're not close? Okay. I'm not I need five about. energy, which we don't have. And I need to be able to spawn three guys in the middle. While I'm in the middle, which we don't have either. Okay. No, so. I'm going to leave what I did. Okay. Bad side is you have to roll a die. Oh, and no. take wounds. <laughs> so, but you can reroll. Wounds help. We'll be three times on the track. Or. And zero wounds or reroll the die. I could, get, the I could possibly get two wounds and die. No. There's, you only get max one wound. So you're okay. okay. I don't want to move up the track three. That's a that's, that's pretty one bad. of each That's card. pretty bad. I mean, it's happening well, it's anyway. Happen. It's happening. <laughs> okay, no damage. <laughs> All right. So we get the little card. Little card, here we go, which is actually probably good. Actually, this is very good. All three lanes are going to activate. Well, hold on. All three lanes are going to activate, but you see how there's a little um, symbol underneath it, the little portal? That means if there's uh, the nest is active. Okay. So that means enemies are going to move in that zone. But there are no enemies. Correct. We have no enemies on board, which is, but the nice thing is we have. Guys, we're next to all the machines. So, so we move the war machines before we resolve the car. So this is about to activate. Um, this one then move. But because we have no enemies on the board, we don't have to worry about anything else. So that was actually a good thing for us. Now for the bad thing. <laughs> what do we land on up there? Uh, the big bad. Now the big bad comes out. We have Yexet comes out. So <laughs> let's add him to the board. So he is it. He has two health, one movement, and when we defeat him, we get a banner. However, his special effect is when we do defeat him, we place two hunters in each adjacent space. So yeah, that's pretty bad. And this can cause a queen to appear. So not very strong, but if you defeat him in the wrong spot, we're in trouble. And where did he start at? At the red. Yeah, right over here. Hey, that's where you're going. <laughs> you got a friend. <laughs> cool. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, but that is that die, and that's the end of your tile. So. Okay. All right. Oh, boy. We are kind of close to getting those war machines in the middle. I wonder if we can do that. Because that will give us three banners. One, two, three, and we need one more, which could be me flipping. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. none of these really help too much. So how can you force the war machines to move, though? I thought that was only when... Only when they activate. We okay. want to draw cards for that to happen. So I'm trying to think of how I can do that. 
Either of these, I think, are probably okay to do now. A little risky, but I think I want to do one of these two. If you did the one on the right... This one. I can't remember how how you... I don't want to say too much. With All right, that. I'll do this one. Well, cause... no, no, I, it's just the question. The All one right. on the left is also uh, pretty good looking at things. Either one. Which of these do you prefer? I can't. It's your choice. It's why it's your turn. Nope, it's your choice. <laughs> okay, so then then you do have to answer my question. What do you have to do to get your guy to flip again? I need five energy, or I need to be in the middle and spawn or deploy three or more Velkin. Then take the one on the right. Okay. Okay. So I get a Velkin action. Yay! So I want to use that for movement. Okay, so I have three movement to use. Um, I want to get. Do you need a guy near, near you to help with that? I mean, it would be nice. You have this guy to move if you need to. All right. Because I think I want to try to get these. Oh, you're in the spot already. So I'm going to get this guy moving here for one. I am going to leave that spot on my turn. Two. A three. Okay. <laughs> That's my movement. The count is in the house. Exactly. A one, a two, a three. And now we have moving twice on that track, which was the dangerous part of this plan. Well, but you also wanted to flip one of these cards anyway. That's my hope. I'm going to flip a card and see if we do get to move those now All that right. in the right spots. So. Went to Vegas. What is it? Went to Vegas, and we do. So we're going to move the green. Now, before anything happens, that's going to activate. So, bloop, moves here. Good. Um, no enemies on the track to move. Okay. Do they spawn? Now, now this would spawn an enemy, but there's no oh, portal below it. Somebody killed the spawn point. Exactly. Yeah. There's, they don't pop up unless they have this really do down there. So this would actually fail spawn because Kim is awesome. That's right. Okay, so that was actually pretty good. We got one closer. We just need two more spaces to get in the middle. Actually, all have to be two spaces in the middle. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so do um, the other side. Yeah, do the other side. <laughs> don't forget. Oh, interesting. I kind of add power to the spawn track. Oh, that's a different take on it. Because the reason I went that route was one, two, oh. three, and then you spend your five, you flip your thing over. That's true. That would give us, and then we just want one more to go. Yeah, no, and, I could, go. and I could kill this guy for two. So let's get the white energy for three. So it moves up to, what, six now? Yep. And then as a reminder for the cards, so I can do my special ability or expend five white energy, which I will gladly do so. We're down to one, and I get into my high prelate state. So I do get additional health, which is great. I still only have one attack, but I've got my halo ability, which lets me heal other people, um, myself. Oh, well, heal one to all heroes in the lane I'm in, including myself. Uh, I'm resilient, though, which means every time I do healing, I can instead pour, perform a Valkan action, which are super powerful anyway. Mm -hmm. Also, because we're both in our uh, awakened state, we can now flip an additional banner because that was one of the goals we had to do. All heroes achieved the awakening status. So halfway there to winning. Kind of. <laughs> kind of. I, right. I did my math wrong because I thought after I took this guy out, we would that'd be victory condition. Nope. But no, there's one left. The one left, yep. Now we can move the war machines to the middle. That will do it. Because that's also three banners. And they're close. Mm -hmm. Okay, Kim. I want to do this one. How bad is that? It's actually potentially good. Potentially good. Potentially. Well, okay, so I know what that means. That one is that one's a that's fine. I like that one actually. I like this one better. I think you'd be happier with your left choice. This one? Yes. I'm torn mm -hmm. because I need what this one does. And I want what this one does. <laughs> okay. Do these guys when they do you have to one shot them or would damage persist? There is no persistent damage in the game, it's all or nothing. Oh. The nice thing about destroying him here is, remember, he will spawn enemies in adjacent spots. Mm -hmm. There's only one adjacent spot. So now is a really good time right, to take I'm going to do this one. Okay. Okay? Yes. You have two actions, and you can break or repair a wall. Yeah, so here's the first action. I'm going to move one, two, three. And can I make a different suggestion? Yeah. Three here? Oh. I see. I was going to use him to stop. 
What you can do instead, too, you, you can do these in any order. You can break the wall right in front of you. I was going to repair this wall. Oh, so let me explain this symbol here. This is the breach symbol. You can either create a new breach in the wall or repair one. It goes either way. Now, when you do this action, you can move any um, heroes or Falcon soldiers in that space through that hole before or after it's made or sealed up. So, for example, you can make a hole here and with that action be move all your guys to that spot. And you would still have your two Vulcan actions to use. Oh. Or you could do the same thing with one that's already created, go through it, then seal it behind you and repair it. So you got some options. That might be kind of nice, because that way you got the two actions to do whatever you need to. Yeah, and I don't want to spend it on moving. Mm -hmm. And then maybe I super attack and hope for the best. That's right. Now, the downside is now you have a hole here, and now you have a place for these guys to spawn when you kill them. Well, I mean, there's they either come into the space through this hole or this hole. It's... The same. Well, oh, it's closer. oh, I it's see. Closer now, yeah, that's downside. Well, I'm gonna. But all or nothing. But hey, all or nothing, because you go for it. It's fine. Yeah, they would have a straight shot to the citadel. Ooh, risky. Yeah, choices though. Now they only gonna activate. Then he will. Who move that space to actually? If I don't kill him. If there's a hole there, remember yeah. they take the closest path. But if I go around and hit him, oh, guys will only spawn here. That's correct. But I wouldn't have an action to attack them. You would have one action to attack them, yes. But you wouldn't have a guy with you. You'd be by yourself, fighting alone. How much energy do you have? One. I don't... I. That's why I wanted to do another... <laughs> I wanted another one, too. Yep. Um, I just think maybe I just go big. Okay. All right, so let's, let's add a wall. Or a breach. Yeah, you use the add the breach, and then you can move um, through that after you made through the breach. And that's a freebie movement. That's a freebie movement as part of the action of creating the breach. That's correct. Okay. So, so then now I... that action's done, now you have these two Vulcan actions. Okay. So the first one, I'm mm -hmm. going to attack the big dad. Okay. There you go. I don't. You need to. You have plenty. <laughs> oh, definitely roll that. We I roll that. We roll with my, sure. my steady ability. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, good. Fine. He is dead. Yep, and that is going to be another banner completed. Shabam. Now, you can take backless damage. Uh-oh. Or the guy could die. No, I want him. Okay. And then now you're going to drop two um, hunters in each adjacent space. This is adjacent, and now because of hole, that's adjacent. So, yay? I have... <laughs> You know what? I could Hail Mary and hit this and win. Okay. You, I'm going to do that. you do that. The second action, I'm going second big. Second action, going big. Oh, gosh. Please. <laughs> I, I already used my reroll. No, each time you roll dice, you can reroll it each time. Oh, right. Yeah. When you roll any die. Okay. Yep. And you have your plus three still. Yeah, that's what I'm banking on. So I have three, four, four five, six, seven. Yeah, seven. I, I'm, this, is, this is happening. Super. Oh! Kill. Yes. That is a gap. Yeah. How much is that, Kim? If I choose to use all of three, so three plus three plus two is eight. Eight? Yes. One, two, three. Eight. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. How wait, how did we get to nine just then? Because it's three plus the three over here. Six. Plus this guy. Seven, eight, nine. Eight, nine. Nine. Oh, yes. Nine Major. to okay. seven. That is now sealed. And we come looking at what is on our mission card. We you destroy the red nest. You get three banners. And Kim, you have just protected the citadel. <laughs> well done. Well done. <laughs> the gamble paid off. You can go clean up these little guys now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, those war machines are heading towards the middle, but we were we were doing pretty good there at the end. So we yeah. managed to work work well together. I, did. I was hoping that you would be able to heal me at some point because I had a lot of damage. You, you were know, close. getting a little risky. The, yes. Um, it's very close with you dying in, in that state for sure. You know, dead guys everywhere. <laughs> it's fine. Okay. One thing we didn't see was these cards get triggered. That's true. Let's talk about how that gets triggered. So in this deck, there are... Oh, perfect. Here's one of them. These cards. So this was spawn and enemy in yellow... Uh, spawn another one if the the gate is open, um, and then resolve the morale track card. So what that would mean in this current state, let's zoom in down there to take a look. Uh, 
we, because we're in the positive here, it's got two. We resolve this effect twice. So, so we, we would get, get two, two actions. Yeah, two Vulcan actions. To split whoever's card yep. that was? Yeah, we could do just like normal. Okay. Um, if this was down here, we would do the negative set to effect twice, which is take two damage. Now, after you do that, you'll put them on the bottom of the deck, and you'll get a new one. So, for example, this one, if it's up higher, you could get energy or breach or negative damage. And so there's a whole bunch of them on there. Um, like, for example, moving up down the power track, for example. Okay. So that's another thing to manage. Every time it is resolved, it resets down to zero. Yeah. So it can be pretty bad, though, if you get down to, like, negative three and resolve <laughs> that four, three times. Yeah. And you die. <laughs> and not, not good news. So all right, good to chat. Okay, so that was Fire Siege. If you're interested in checking it out, look at the description for the link to the game found page. But Kim, what did you think of that? This was a fun um, game. I, when you said it was a tower defense game, at first I was a little concerned mm -hmm. because those can get repetitive um, and, and stale at times, um, but it didn't really feel that way to me in the mm -hmm. sense that you're not, you're not building just all right, I'm going to build a cannon over here and it, it's different. So it wasn't what right. I was expecting when you, when you kind of gave me a real brief synopsis um, before we came out to play. Um, so it was a pleasant surprise. Yeah. Cause you defend the Citadel in this one. So, uh, and the interesting lanes on there, uh, I really, really like the pace of the game. Cause it was funny because at one point you weren't playing the game. You asked, so when do we draw the event card for the bad guys? You don't. Every moment in this game feels like it's your turn or a player turn. Because it's you just pick one of the sides, resolve that side, flip over, flip up, do the other side, draw a new tile. You know, and it's the next person's turn. And even on their turn, you are involved in that decision because you see the information that they don't. So it honestly feels like there's no downtime in this game. I love that. Uh, now, of course, you, your turn doesn't come up until everyone takes a turn, but still, you're involved in every single turn. Awesome. The missions are really cool. I like the variety in that. It feels like a different game when you play it. And some of them are really interesting where you have to bring the hunters, the enemies, into a spot where you can actually mind control them, which is really cool. Or there might be a hero you need to rescue and bring back to Citadel to heal them. Um, a lot of variety in that one. Very cool. I can see that there's a lot of potential for uh, for expanding the concepts of the game. Uh, the dice are fine. I don't have any issues with the dice. They work great. Uh, some of them, like you saw, the moving on that track three times can be pretty bad. But actually, in our case, it, it worked out. It worked out well because we were in the right positions to try to get those to move. Now, I will say that this was definitely on the easier side, which you just observed. Um, it's definitely easy setting, and it gets a lot harder from here. <laughs> a lot harder. So don't worry about, hey, that looked too easy, not much of a challenge. Trust me, the challenge is definitely there. Um, and we you can eat, lose them easy as well. <laughs> it's very, yeah. very possible. In fact, you pointed out that you only have one health left. Yeah, I could have died. If you chose the wrong card <laughs> and took a damage, we would have all lost the game. Yeah. So we're gonna risk uh, it for the biscuit. Though. Exactly. But exactly. well, and that's you mentioned characters and how there are different characters. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's part of the reason why this doesn't feel like this tower defense. Mm -hmm. typical game right. uh, because you're moving your guy around you have a skill set to try to advance to and play with um so i, I really like that part of it all right yeah i think this is great i think it's a fun one like i said the biggest thing is the downtime or lack thereof very awesome job on that one good well thanks everyone for watching and we'll see you next time at the cool guild bye bye, -bye.